Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look in on the European Nightcrawlers that I started from 500 Cocoons in 2019. Now these guys have been in this large bin for about nine months and they spent, you know, more than a year in their other bin. Now what the goal is for today is to see if I can harvest some of this uh, because it is that time of the year and I could use some of the castings and they look like they might be fluffy enough to harvest. So let me get my screen and let's see what we can get. Uh, you can tell there are some sprouts here as well as a little tiny mushroom. Uh, I don't really know what, uh, pretty sure this is pumpkin, but I don't know why I have uh, mushrooms. Probably should get one smaller. Okay. So I'm just going to take little handfuls here and do like I do for the, the bin that I call blue and kind of shake that and see what I'm getting. I'm not getting as high of a percentage as I had hoped, but there was a lot of coconut core in this bin, so it may look like castings, but it just might not be 100% castings like I would like it to be. But if I get a gallon or so, I'll be happy. So, you know, what we're doing right now is we're just going to get a bit of a harvest, like we do with blue, and then after that we're going to um, kind of fluff up the finished end, get them a little bit aerated. The moisture percentage in this basement right now is about 60%. It's been raining. So I don't even think we're getting 50% out of the screenings here. This is my one quarter inch screen that I got from Amazon. I put the links below in case you want to buy something similar. Mine came in a kit with everything from one half inch all the way down to one twentieth of an inch. And uh, I use these for bonsai soil as well as for castings. So for me, getting the kit made sense because uh, this bonsai soil is uh, in particular to what size plant it is as to how big of you know, particles there needs to be. So I'm not getting as much as I'd like, but that's life. The worms do what they want. So we're going to make a mistake there. Move these back over and see if I can get something from this side. All right. Not fabulous, but I think it'll be enough to get something accomplished in my garden this weekend. Okay. So I'll take this away and this and then we will upturn this partially finished portion here and it does look nice and fluffy. I can't remember if we did fluffing on this last time or not but I know that the part that I just sifted is definitely not done. It must be mostly coconut core, so this is probably a good time to turn that underneath so that the stuff underneath the bin uh, can have a chance to dry out and maybe get harvested next time. So per what we do with the wedge is we do pile up the, the finished part as we remove things so that we can make more room for new stuff. So that just means that this one foot deep end is going to be closer to a foot than usual. And you can see the moisture is really good down at the bottom here but not so good at the top so that is why I do these evaluations on a pretty regular basis especially with these bins that are really deep. Okay, there we go. I think we're getting someplace here. Now, what is probably two and a half to three pounds of worms in here now used to be 500 cocoons in 2019. They were just raised in a 10 gallon bin for most of their life. And so nine months ago, they got to stretch their legs. So I'm willing to bet that they're breeding at a, at a higher rate now because they've got the room. 
uh, to stretch out. All right, guys, if you're enjoying this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. I've read in a lot of my textbooks that worms will slow down and stop reproducing if they don't have the room to, or their reproduction rate will be, you know, will suffer if they don't have the resources. So here's the new part where we um, fed all that pumpkin last time. I will put that below as, and so you can see what the feeding looked like last time. But we also put a lot of bedding in here. So let's see what the worms have done with the huge amount of pumpkin in the last 25 days or so. So let's see, this is still seeming to be the old side. But because I, I sift all my castings, I get irritated with myself for mixing in the new bedding, but I sift anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Well, let's see what we've got. So it looks like we still have those uh, flower stems from a couple of feedings ago. I'm not running into any pumpkin. I think this might be pumpkin skin, so 25 days might have been too much to get a good worm ball out of these guys. Yep, no, the grape stem still in here. That is a super slow food, grape stems. They're almost like wood. All right, let's look at this side and see if I am going to get a worm ball over here. Okay. Nope, there is a tiny little bit of pumpkin, but it wasn't really well covered in the corner, so maybe they didn't get to it because it was too exposed. So, not really a worm ball, kind of a diffused worm ball here. That's a little disappointing, but um, now that I'm only getting in here about every three weeks, it's kind of be to be expected. I need to get in here every two weeks if we're going to see a good worm ball. But I do like to let these guys have a good uh, pumpkin stem, an opportunity to finish their food uh, without me disrupting them. Okay, so we're taking all of the in-progress stuff here. Okay, camera quit for a second, but this is their new feeding. And what we have here is some tomatoes, some lemons, uh, looks like some onions, and it looks like we've got some hamburger buns, and maybe some radishes. I'm not 100% sure. But then we're just going to take some of my prepared bedding, and we're going to cover them up really, really good. And that way, the bugs won't be able to see the new food. And uh, the net apocalypse is finally coming to an end down here. So it would be really ideal if uh, it didn't start up again. Had my vinegar traps out and everything, and uh, caught a sickening amount of fungus gnats or whatever they are, and it's finally under control in the basement here. I don't want that to happen again. Now, if you like the uh, wedge system or just looking in on the ENCs, I will put their playlist over here. And if you want to see the last feeding in person, I will put the last video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.